This is Professor Bill Chen in the math department. I'm mostly a pure mathematician who recently got led into applied probability via my interest in card games such as blackjack and poker. Along the way, I taught classes on the mathematics of games of chance and gambling, and I've done some research on the theory of optimal betting, which I'll tell you about in this video. Probability theory began with simple games of chance involving dice and coins. Today, the math pervades more complex games such as blackjack, poker, and investing in markets. Also, probability theory is at the heart of quantum physics. The simple understandings at the beginning evolved into modeling of more complex phenomena in investing and finance and fields such as the spread of pandemics and overall the nature of the physical world. Well, we can start by discussing the value of money or how much is a sum of money or some other object worth. Daniel Bernoulli in 1738 said, utility or the value or worth of a small increase or in wealth is inversely proportional to the quantity of goods previously possessed, meaning that how much some sum is worth depends on how much you had to start with. Translating this mathematically, we have a utility function, u equals u of x, such that the small change in, in utility, du, is inversely proportional to the amount x and a small change in wealth, dx. By calculus, this leads to the utility function u equals log of x, or some proportion plus a constant. And this utility function log of x is the basic utility function and is the basis for all of utility theory over centuries. A gamble is evaluated based on expected utility rather than expected value. In the modern theory, a lot of utility functions are entertained other than just the log function. I should add that utility functions are not really the end of this discussion. For example, the psychologists Kahneman and Tversky invented what's called prospect theory as a revision of utility functions and behavior under risk, and it earned Kahneman a Nobel Prize in economics in 2002. Let's suppose we have a coin flip, which is in your favor, and there's a probability P of heads, and assume that the bet pays odds Q to 1. Okay, so let's decide to bet a fixed fraction of the bankroll on each flip. You can solve this problem using calculus and the exponential growth rate and also logarithmic utility is maximized by the following formula. It's summarized by saying edge over odds and it's called fortune's formula tongue in cheek by Thorpe, the inventor of card counting in blackjack and the book by Poundstone about card counting and advantage gambling in general. And it was developed in the context of the information theory of Claude Shannon, done by R. Kelly at Bell Labs. In practice, if you use this formula, it's considered to be super risky. And so practitioners bet some scaled down fraction of this optimal amount called the Kelly fraction. This fraction F corresponds to using an isoelastic utility function or um, a constant relative risk aversion. F equals one corresponds to the optimal log utility. So the index F, the fraction F is an index of risk aversion. If you don't have an advantage in the bet, well then your optimal bet is zero, like in most casino style gambling. Well, here's how it works. The expected growth rate is down by a factor of 2f minus f squared from optimal. So the question is really, where do you want to be on this parabola? We have uh, at f equals 1, the optimal bet. And then if f is greater than 1, your growth rate decreases. And it's the same as what you can get at f less than 1 with less risk. At f equals 2, by the time you get to f equals 2, your growth rate is 0. 
This explains why you should never, never over bet. Most professional gamblers shoot for something in the range of a third to a half Kelly. Well, how risky is Kelly betting? Well, at the full optimal F equals one, there's a probability P that your bank roll will be reduced by a factor of P. And this is true for all probabilities and proportions P. In other words, there's a 50% chance that you'll lose half your money at some point in the future. And the same goes for 10%, etc. This doesn't mean you're regularly gonna lose most of your money because sometimes you'll double your money before getting cut in half. But what it does seem to indicate that at F equals one, the ride is a very wild one. The proof of this formula comes from the theory of stochastic calculus. To make things more broadly applicable, we use the stochastic differential equation as shown, which results in geometric Brownian motion. Well, mu is the edge in the game, and uh, the other term is the so-called bet size, and and W, or the differential of W, is Gaussian white noise. Geometric Brownian motion is exponential growth with a normal noise term superimposed in a specific way. We can generalize further to the multivariate case where we're talking about a vector process which represents perhaps a portfolio or many simultaneously correlated bets with a drift term M and a fraction vector k of the bankroll bet. And we have a covariance matrix C. Then we find that the asymptotic growth is optimized at the fraction as shown using C and M minus the risk-free vector. And this is due to Merton who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1997. And there's a relatively simple exposition by Ed Thorpe. We can note that this formulation recaptures the Markowitz mean variance optimization, which incidentally earned Markowitz the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1990. What we do now is obtain an estimator for the historical fraction based on data, and we get the estimator f hat, which I won't show here, but let me just say that we do get an approximation for the variance of f hat, which we display here. Here, v is the variance per unit time, and r is the observed rate of return per unit time. In discrete time, what if you have a sequence of bankroll growth rates or excess rates? Then the bankroll at time n, say, is the original bankroll times the product of 1 plus xi as i goes from 1 to n. Notice this is an extremely general setup as opposed to the continuous time geometric Brownian motion model we had before. Here x1, x2, etc. are the computed bankroll growth rates over equally spaced times. Now we invoke a hypothetical formal leverage factor and plug everything in, and if you maximize, using calculus, uh, the sum of the logs of 1 plus L xi, then you can fish out a linear approximation, which uh, has a quite elegant form, and that yields an estimate of the Kelly fraction historically bet, which is the reciprocal 1 over L. So what we have here is a discrete time version of the estimator f hat that we discussed before. We've applied this to some data, for example, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's hedge fund, and we found Kelly fractions based on 30 years of data. This is in contrast to what Thorpe and others, for example, Ziemba say that Warren Buffett is a full Kelly better. He's an F equals one better. We found that the Kelly fraction historically used by Berkshire Hathaway has been significantly bounded below one for our 40-year data set. This indicates that their risk tolerance is more in line with professional gamblers, 
such as poker and blackjack players, and less risk tolerant than a full Kelly better would be. Estimation is continuing on data sets like this and via simulation.